Welcome to online training for staff at the University of Kentucky Healthcare needing APM View Only access. This WBT is intended to show users how to log into APM and view demographic information, as well as patient and resource schedules. In this video, we will cover what APM is, how to log into APM, look a patient up, view demographic information, and look up patient and resource schedules. APM, or Ambulatory Practice Management, is the system used to register and schedule patient appointments as well as build and maintain resource schedules. You can log into APM by using the APM icon on your desktop, MedConnect, or by going to the Ambulatory folder in your Start menu. APM is connected to your LinkBlue account and will automatically log you in as long as you are logged into the computer with your LinkBlue username and password. Today we will be using UK underscore APM underscore train to protect the privacy of patients. The Practice Management Navigation pane holds group folders. In each group folder are subfolders. Click the drop down next to the group folders to see the subfolders within each. In the Patient Management folder, is the registration subfolder. Click once to access the folder. In the registration folder, there are five tabs. You will default to the summary tab. The summary tab is where you will search for your patient by clicking on the binoculars. There are three recommended search criteria. First, we recommend you search by medical record number. Click the drop down and find medical record number. Click in the Search For field and type in the medical record number. Click Local Search. In the Live system, this will say Search All Sources. If the patient is found, highlight and click OK. If the patient is not found or does not know their medical record number, the second recommended search is Social Security Number. Click the drop down in the Search By field and scroll to find Social Security Number. Click in the Search For field and type in the patient's Social Security Number if available. Click Local Search. In the Live system, this will say Search All Sources. If the patient is found, highlight and click OK. If and when the patient is not found by Social Security Number, the third recommended search is a dual search patient name and date of birth. Click the drop down in the search by field and scroll to find patient name. Click the drop down in the search by to field and scroll to find date of birth. When searching by name and date of birth in APM, you must enter last name, comma, no space, or space, first name. Click in the Search for To field to enter the date of birth. When entering the date of birth, it must be 2, 2, and 4. 2 for the month, 2 for the day, and 4 for the year. Once you have entered the name and date of birth, click on Local Search. In the Live system, this will say Search All Sources. Select the patient and click OK. The Summary tab is a snapshot of patient, policy, and account information. Click on the Patient tab. The Patient tab is the patient demographic information, such as address, phone number, date of birth, etc. The Account tab is where you can find the guarantor, subscriber, and emergency contact information. When you click on each person in the contact box, the information below will display that specific contact information. The Policies tab will display the active and expired policies on a patient's account. The Additional Info tab will display additional information about the patient such as race, ethnicity, primary language, and alias information. Click the drop-down next to the Scheduling folder. Click one time on the Appointment Scheduling folder. The patient that you searched for in the registration folder should stay in context and default on the appointment scheduling folder. You will default to the patient scheduling tab 
which is where you will search for your patient if your patient did not default or if you go straight to the appointment scheduling folder first. Once the patient has been looked up or is in context, you will see the gray patient banner, which will display the patient's name, date of birth, social security number, and age. Below the patient banner is basic patient information, such as address, phone number, medical record number, date of birth, etc. Under the patient information is the future appointment box, which will display any future appointments for the patient. Click on the Appointment Activity tab. The Appointment Activity tab will display all patient appointments, regardless of status, back to July 2nd of 2012. The Status column will display the status of each individual appointment. The most common appointment statuses you will see are Scheduled for future appointments, Wait List, which are future appointments as well, but the patient would like to be seen sooner if possible, Acknowledged, which means the patient was here and seen, Bumped, which are appointments that need to be rescheduled due to lack of resource availability, Canceled, which are canceled or rescheduled appointments, and No-Show, which are appointments the patient did not keep. These appointments can be sorted by using the Appointment Status box and uncheck the status you do not want displayed. The Appointment Status box defaults to show all appointments. If the user only wants to see the scheduled appointments, they can uncheck all status options except Scheduled, Waitlist, and Confirmed. And all you will see are the scheduled, waitlist, and confirmed appointments for the patient. This is a temporary sort. By default, the appointments will display with the oldest at the top and the future at the bottom. If you click on the column header date, the future appointments will display at the top and the older at the bottom. You can also click on the column header resource and this will put your resources in alphabetical order. All sorts done in the Appointment Activity tab are temporary. Once you leave the tab, it will revert to the default. There is an R column and a C column to the far left of this tab. The R column can display a green square, which will indicate that a referral or pre-cert is needed and has been entered into the system. The R column can also display a yellow square, which indicates that a referral or pre-cert is needed but has not been entered into the system yet. The C column will indicate if the insurance has been verified. When you right-click on any appointment, APM will give you several options. One of those options is Appointment Detail. Click on Appointment Detail. This will display details about the appointment, such as when and who booked the appointment, referring physician, referral or pre-certification information, and in the comments, why the patient is being seen. If there is a referral or pre-certification linked to an appointment, click on the Referrals button to view the referral or pre-certification information. Once the referral or pre-certification information has been viewed, click OK. Click OK from Appointment Detail and you will default back to the Appointment Activity tab. Once back on the Appointment Activity tab, right-clicking again can give you several other options such as patient info. Click on Patient Information. This will bring up patient demographic information. Once viewed, click OK to return to the Appointment Activity tab. Users will be able to print an Appointment Reminder document by right-clicking on the appointment and choosing the Appointment Reminder Document option. Click on the Appointment Management tab. This tab is intended for viewing the status of appointments by department, location, or resource for a given date or date range. Click on the Scheduled Department, Location, or Resource field and populate with your department, location, or a specific resource. The date fields will default to today's date. If you would like another date or date range, click the drop-down for a calendar and choose the appropriate date or dates. Both date fields must be populated. Click Query to display the list of appointments, or Today to see the list of appointments for today. 
By default, appointments are listed in date and time order, but can be sorted by clicking the column header. For example, if you click the patient header, the appointment list is in alphabetical order by patient name. You can also sort by appointment status. The appointment status box will show you a number in parentheses, which tells you how many patients with that status are on your appointment list. Cancellations and no-shows do not default, so you would need to check the box to see cancellations or no-shows on your appointment list. When you right-click on any appointment in APM, one of those options is Appointment Detail. Click on Appointment Detail. This will display details about the appointment, such as when and who booked the appointment, referring physician, referral or pre-certification information, and in the comments, why the patient is being seen. Click OK from the Appointment Detail screen, and you will default back to the Appointment Management tab. Once back on the Appointment Management tab, right-clicking again can give you several other options, such as patient information. Click on Patient Information. This will bring up patient demographic information. Once viewed, click OK to return to the Appointment Management tab. Users will also be able to print an appointment reminder by right-clicking on the appointment and choosing the Appointment Reminder Document option. Once you have viewed all of the information needed, users will have the ability to print the appointment schedule. Click the Scheduling Activities folder in the Navigation pane. You will default to the Appointment Schedule tab. The Appointment Schedule prints a list of appointments as well as any open and available time slots by date or date range. The format for printing the appointment schedule is determined by each clinic's needs. Users can select by resource or resource group, scheduling departments, and or scheduling locations. To the right of each of these options, there is a four checkmark icon which will pull all resources, departments, and locations. If you do not enter selections for resource, department, or location, you will see every appointment for every resource, every department, and every location. Clicking the two checkmark icon will allow you to print the schedule for a selected resource, department, or location. Once you click on the two checkmark icon, you will default to the Resource Groups tab. Clicking on the Resources tab will allow you to print a schedule for an individual resource. Uncheck All Resources. Click on the word Description. This will put the list of resources in alphabetical order by name. To choose more than one resource, hold down your Control key. Use the scroll bar to the right to scroll down and find the individual resource needed. Click to select the resource needed, then click OK. You will notice the system does not show you who you selected, just that you selected something. Click the two checkmark icon next to the Select Scheduling Departments field. This will allow you to print the schedule for a specific department. Uncheck All Scheduling Departments, then click the word Description. This will put the departments in alphabetical order by department name. Use the scroll bar to the right to scroll down to find the department needed. Click to select the department needed. To choose more than one department, hold down the Control key, and then click OK. Click the two checkmark icon next to the Select Scheduling Locations field. This will allow you to print the schedule for a specific location. Uncheck All Scheduling Locations. Click on the word Description to put the locations in alphabetical order by location name. Use the scroll bar to the right to scroll down to find the location needed. Click to select the location needed. To choose more than one location, hold down the Control key and then click OK. Appointment date from and to must be populated. Click the drop-down arrow next to the appointment date to use the calendar to choose a specific date or date range. 
There are other options available such as AM appointments only, PM appointments only, include coverage status, or range of times. Once your selections have been made, click Run. The print box will appear. You can choose to go ahead and print the schedule or preview. If you choose to preview before printing, the appointment schedule will open for previewing. To print, click on the printer icon located at the top left-hand side of the window. Click the X to close the preview window. This will return you to the job status window. Once back on the job status window, click the release button located at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. If you are not done working in APM, click on the desired folder in the Practice Management Navigation pane. And click on the binoculars to look up the next patient if needed. Once you're done working in APM, always be sure to log out properly by clicking the Log Off icon in the toolbar. This completes training for APM View Only and Printing Access. If you have any questions, please contact Elsie Fraley or Carrie Walters with IT Education.